Hello everyone, my name is Ryan and I am a pre-med student based in Australia. As an international applicant, I know how hard it is to find resources to prepare for the ISAT, so I thought it might be a nice idea for me to share some of my insights and some tips for you to do well in the ISAT. First of all, the title is not a clickbait. I have indeed completed my ISAT this year January, which is cycle one, because I want to be totally focused on my high school studies when year 12 starts. I have managed to obtain a score of 188, which is converted into the 98th percentile. All right, that's enough about me and let's get into it. Um, I suppose if you are watching this, then you probably know what the ISAT is, which stands for the International uh, Student Admission Test and is used by all medical and dentistry schools across Australia. As it is a three hour multiple choice aptitude test, it is not testing any specific knowledge like biology or chemistry, but the ISAT is heavily focused on your ability in extracting information, making quick and logical deductions and forming judgments. There are two main question types in the ISAT, which are quantitative reasoning that requires you to do some calculations and number manipulations. And also there's the critical reasoning that requires you to uh, make logical deductions from texts. The ISAT is used by every university for their dentistry or medicine courses, except for James Cook University and the University of Adelaide. In order to secure an offer, you will need to get somewhere around or above the 80th percentile to be safe which means you have to beat 80% of your competitors. And in this video, I'm here to provide you with some tips that will help you to get the percentile that you want. Tip number one, time management and a calm mind. I cannot stress this enough. There is nothing more important than managing your time well in the ISAT because on average, you would only get about 1.8 minutes per question. 1.8 minutes means you have to read the question, you have to read the text, understand the text, read the answer options and do the calculations, make deductions and finally pick the right answer. So it is imperative for you to guess, skip and flag the questions that you think are too difficult or you are just unsure about because it is better for you to finish the exam early and go back to these questions rather than finishing the exam with um, 20, more than 20 questions left unanswered because you run out of time. I personally had around 15 questions flagged and about 10 minutes left to the end of the exam, so I cleared up my mind and reattempted some of them. Don't freak out if you can't do one question or um, a few questions in a row, it's fine. Just accept the fact and move on. When I first did my mock exam, I was always worried about the questions that I was unsure about and uh, I could not stop myself from overthinking about them. Not surprisingly, I didn't do well on that one and I only got 63 questions right out of the 100. So the second time when I did another mock exam, I made a conscious effort to not think about the questions that, that I've already done or the questions I already skipped because thinking about them only compromises my ability to think clearly about the current questions that I'm doing. I know it sounds very obvious, but trust me, it takes practice to get used to the pressure and stop overthinking. So every time when you are doing a mock exam or doing some practice questions, always try to work on your mindset as well so you don't freak out in the actual exam. Tip number two, you need to get used to the exhaustion. So at first, I did not think three hours is a big problem, but after I finished my first mock exam, I I found it to be very difficult to concentrate for such long period of time. In fact, I've lost my focus about five times during the mock exam and I was on the edge of giving up. Of course, you are allowed to take breaks during the ISAT while the clock is still running, but only psychopaths will actually take one, yeah? So before your actual ISAT, you have to train your brain to concentrate for a long period of time and get used to sitting down and doing questions for three hours straight. It will be very hard at first, but with some practice, you can even push yourself to four hours. Losing focus wastes about one to two minutes every time. So if you can stay focused, totally focused throughout the exam, that would just give you such an advantage over others. Tip number three, practice is key. Some people say because it's an aptitude test, so there's little point to prepare for it. Well, I just have to say that these people are wrong and they can feel free to go into the exam without doing anything. Uh, although it is true that the skills are very hard to be acquired over a short period of time, 
but with lots of practice, you will just naturally get better. Compared to a guy who only completed 45 questions from the official mock exam produced by ASA, you would get such an advantage if you do 450 questions or even 1000 questions. Yes, there will be a placebo effect in play, but your familiarity with the question types and also your skills in aptitude test will also contribute greatly to your outcome. You can 100% develop the skills that are most efficient and work best for you um, through a lot of practice. And by a lot of practice, I mean 100 hours or 200 hours. However, I do believe that tutoring is not so helpful as I have attended classes at multiple tutoring companies and I do not think they have helped me to the extent that they claimed that they would. I did make some friends through group tutoring sessions and we all felt that the only value that we took from the companies were their practice questions. But as this market doesn't have much competition, everything is just overpriced and paying $2,000 for some practice questions just sounds a bit ridiculous. There was even one company, which I'm not going to name it, was a complete scam and the tutor didn't show up even though I paid for the tutoring. So I would recommend you to just find practice questions by yourself and do them because the tutors don't specialize in ISAT and they don't really teach you anything of much value at all. But if you have the money, then it's your choice. Lastly, it is also very important for you to go through your mistake questions and understand what you got wrong the first time. And you also need to make a note of this so you don't make the same mistake the next time you encounter the same type of question. But where do you actually find all these practice resources? The first and the most valuable resource would be the official mock exam produced by ASA, which contains 45 questions and mimics the actual exam very well. But come on, 45 questions is just not enough. The secondary resource is the gap set which is also created by ASA and is taken by university students who wish to study post-grad medicine at institute like University of Melbourne. Only the section 1 of the GAMSAT is actually relevant to the ISAT uh, because other sections are testing your existing knowledge in biology, chemistry, physics and other um, areas as well. The questions in the GAMSAT are harder than the ISAT but it, the question types are very similar and the resources for that is plentiful. Very importantly, I also want to um, talk about the UCAT versus the ISAT because some people claim that the UCAT is very similar to the ISAT, but in fact, they are largely not. Even for the sections from the UCAT that are somewhat similar to the ISAT, which are verbal reasoning and quantitative reasoning, the verbal reasoning section contains a very large number of questions asking you whether a statement is true, false, or can't tell um, based on the information given but this question type is just not present in the ISAT. Also, the type of passages in the UCAT is also very different from it is in the ISAT because in the ISAT, the quantitative and critical reasoning are not separate, but it is separate in the UCAT. So in the ISAT, you would actually get a text accompanied by some graphs, some tables and some numbers, and you have to understand that very well. And because the UCAT allows the use of calculators while ISAT doesn't, so the quantitative questions in the UCAT um, are a bit harder and more time consuming if you do it by hand. Whereas the quantitative questions in the ISAT uh, largely focus on your ability to understand how the data is presented and make inference from that. And the math is relatively simple. Because you haven't done the ISAT, so you don't know which questions from the UCAT are actually relevant, so it's easy for you to get lost and waste time doing the questions that are not worth it. But if you have the time and money to spare, then feel free to buy some UCAT stuff because the section 1 from the GAMSA doesn't have many um, quantitative questions at all. Lastly, because I have also personally um, done a lot of tutoring and did about 3,500 questions in total, Together with my friend Alex, who got a 91st percentile last year and now a first year medical student at Monash, we compiled a question bank of 1,200 questions that mimic the ISAT the most from the 10,000 questions that we personally purchased online from UCAT, GAMSAT or even tutoring services. So if you do not want to spend hours upon hours finding the questions by yourself or pay thousands of dollars to the tutoring companies, 
then feel free to contact us on Instagram, which is linked down below in the description. So that'll conclude today's video on the general tips for the eye set. And I will also be uploading more videos in the upcoming weeks. So please consider subscribing and so you don't miss them. Um, thanks everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.